Hello, Archie Dunlop here with Talking Astrology with Archie on Thursday, October the 24th, 2024. So the reason I've got this American flag on the thumbnail is because I just want to have an update on the United States. I just wanted to uh, look at some of the transits going on to the United States' July the 4th, 1776 chart and wanted to consider some events going on around the election and also perhaps have another look at the America's uh, Pluto return, remembering that Pluto has just recently gone stationary direct, very close to where Pluto was on July the 4th, 1776. And Perhaps it's a good opportunity to look at some inauguration charts. The inauguration chart of Biden in uh, 2001. And perhaps look at the inauguration chart of what I think will be Trump in 2025. Just to see if we can pick anything up there. Anyway, uh, before I do that, I want to look at the astrology and the I Ching for uh, today. Which is uh, Thursday, October the 24th, 2024. Just a reminder, if you like this video, I would be very grateful if you were to indicate that by liking the video. And if you're not subscribed, I would be very grateful if you were to subscribe. Anyway, uh, let's, let's look at what's going on today. So here is the chart for today, set for noon in New York. And we can see that the moon is at five degrees a Leo. So in other words, the moon is out of cancer now and it's in Leo. And I think that is a good thing that the moon is in Leo because, you know, we have a bit of fire now. We've already got Venus in Sagittarius in a far sign. Now we've got moon in Leo as well. So it gives us a bit of a spark. Uh, perhaps we feel a little bit inspired there and you know we can sort of get things moving so overall good news having the moon being in leo but you know we shouldn't forget that the moon is a little bit fragile in leo it's not like the sun in leo the moon doesn't really have any dignity in the the sign leo and it can be be difficult for Leo to sort of difficult for the moon to express itself because just Leo is just too positive, too hot. It's just uh, not quite the right environment for for the moon. So in terms of how that might express itself, you know, some of us might feel we want attention, moon in Leo, but are we going to be able to get that attention? And sometimes we might feel that it's all a bit too much and in spite of our desire for intent, for attention, when it actually comes to the crunch, we are not able to see it through. So if you don't get attention, if you're looking for attention, you know, don't worry about it too much and uh, don't feel that you have to try too hard. And the moon is, yes, its moon is making a trine to Venus uh, which is which again that is nice moon trine venus it's not it's not okay it's not super emotional because it's not in water signs but it's in fire signs so moon trine venus suggests that you know when we're with other people there's a certain amount of, there's a certain amount of a buzz going on there is some excitement you know even if we're not the center of attention and at the same time the moon is making a square to the sun now the reason the moon square sun is important is because it's it's the last quarter moon. It's the moon is making it the square. That means that we've just got just over a week before the new moon. I think the new moon is on November the first. So the lunar cycle is coming to an end. And you know, if we've been trying to develop something over the course of October, it's now coming we're now at crunch time. It's now or never. So, I mean, I'm not, I don't want to be dramatic about it, but many of us may feel that it's like now or never. You know, we've been trying to sort something out. We've understood the problems and this is kind of the last chance. And if we don't sort it out now, well, 
then we're going to have to wait till the new moon and see and see what that new moon brings. And you know, you know, I did uh, I did a a sort of weekly roundup a few days ago, and I mentioned this this sun square moon. And I what I said about the sun square moon in terms of the American election, you know, it kind of fits, isn't it? It's the sort of last chance. And I think that you know all the candidates are sort of feeling this, and they're feeling the pressure of that that new moon. By the way, that new moon is at one degree. The moon will be at one degree Leo, and the sun will be at well when that sorry when not the new moon the last quarter moon. The moon will be at one degree about one degree Leo. The sun will be about one degree Scorpio. So that last quarter moon is exactly on. Um, hitting Kamala Harris's Mercury, so her her Mercury is around one Scorpio. So she's going to have Sun on her Mercury, transiting her Mercury exactly. She's going to have Moon square her Mercury, and so I suppose she's going to really feel that. You know, this is her last chance to uh, to turn things round, and so she she could be really hit by this uh, by this last quarter Moon, and. As far as other things are concerned, well, you know, that's pretty much it. Uh, before the moon moves into Leo, going from moving through late Cancer, the moon does make a trine to Neptune and it does make an opposition to Pluto. Many of us might not feel that because it's sort of at the beginning of the day. Uh, but, you know, I suppose with moon opposition Pluto, uh, you know, moon quite close to quite close to the conjunction of mars opposition pluto at the beginning of the day there may be just a certain amount a certain amount of uh, tension in the air there may be a certain sense of struggle winners losers and that's probably going to be more of a factor if you're in for example australia or new zealand so if you look for example at the chart for today but you set set it for set it for sydney remember at noon it's at 5 leo set for set for New York, if you set that chart for Sydney, Australia, as a representative chart of Australasia, you see that the moon is at 27 degrees Cancer. So if you're in the Australias, if you're in, if you're in Australia or New Zealand, sorry, if you're in Australia or New Zealand or East Asia, you know, for much of a day, the moon is not going to be in Leo, it's going to be in Lake Cancer. And perhaps a lot of what I said about the moon in Leo is not necessarily going to apply until tomorrow or until late in the day. And so in Australasia, the moon is applying to an opposition of Pluto and it's still conjunct Mars. So if you're in Asia, Australia, New Zealand, I think it's going to probably be a day that's more tense than if you're in the Americas. Now, turning to the heliocentric picture putting the putting the sun at the center of the solar system uh, where of course it it should be we we get this we get we get this chart here so these are the positions of planets at noon heliocentrically and we i suppose we could say that the most important aspect which is developing is the trine between sorry the square between mars and saturn you can see mars is at 15 16 gemini moving to saturn at 17 18 pisces so you know, for many of us we may there may be a sort of a uh, a mars saturn feel i think a feeling that things are getting more intense and there may be a sense of frustration over the next few days there are, there are things that we want to do and we want to do them quickly but somehow we can't quite get them off the ground and remembering that heliocentric charts are often about the world at large and there, there may be a certain pessimism about the future of the world when we look at what's happening it may all seem to be a little bit a little bit grim and mercury Mercury is still making that square, making that square to Saturn. Uh, it's, it's not, it's said it's not exact, but Mercury is sort of moving away from a square to Saturn. But I think we still get a sense of it. Mercury square Saturn, 
some of us may be tempted to use language that is um, somewhat harsh with Mercury square Saturn. But Mercury does make a trine to Chiron. And so there's a difference between speech which is harsh and speech which is designed to get a reaction. And I think Mercury trying Chiron, it may be easy to say things which get a response that people don't want to hear that uh, we can be uh, we can be provocative um, with what we say we, indeed we may feel that we have to be provocative because that is the nature of Charon Charon perhaps wants to get people to think you don't want people to get too comfortable you want to give people a a different a different view and uh, get them to in some way shift their awareness and the Earth. The Earth is still square Pluto. There's the Earth at 1 degree 44 Taurus and square Pluto at 1 degree 18 Aquarius. Indeed, you could say that the Earth is sort of on the Venus-Pluto midpoint. Yeah, I mean, the Earth is still square Venus. I think that that, that aspect is not exact anymore. But with, with Earth square Pluto... You know, it, it's a reminder that what's happening on this planet is is heavy. We sometimes can't always talk about it. We know it's heavy, even if we indeed, even if we can't see what's going on. So that's uh, that's something we should uh, you know bear in mind as we go through the through the day. And you know, if we have feelings of heaviness in ourselves and as concerns about the way things are going, being worried about things. It just may not be us. It may be about just the broad atmosphere in which we are living. So, okay, so those are the positions of the planets from a heliocentric perspective. And now I want to look at what's going on for going along, going on in the lives of the 12 signs today, which is Thursday, October the 24th, 2024. Aries. Aries, the moon is now in Leo. Okay, if you're in Australia or New Zealand, it might be about to move in, into Leo. You're not quite there yet. But uh, overall, we can see the moon moving into this sign, Leo. And it's starting to make a trine to Venus. And from your view, I think this is... Uh, good news it's something to be welcomed because you've got uh, you know you've got the moon in a far sign leo you've got venus in a far sign which is sagittarius and of course you aries are a far sign and so this trine is going to be i think very motivating you know over the last few days you perhaps haven't been as motivated as you usually are uh, you may have felt that you know now was not quite the right time that you had to you had to pause and you had to sort of let things develop well you've done your pausing you've allowed things to develop and now everything is moving and it's it's kind of moving your way in fact you could say that it's a kind of a grand trine because we've got the north node at six aries as well so we've got north node at six six aries trine moon trine venus so yeah so things are things are very much moving and you've kind of uh, got your spark back and uh, maybe uh, you know there's that line in um I don't know if you've seen that film performance with um, you know Mick Jagger in it, a sixties <clears throat> film, and uh, Mick Jagger was I don't know whether he's quite playing himself, but he was uh, in this house house and uh, it was I don't know it's an interesting film, but uh, someone said to him, "You've lost your demon," and I, I thought that's a really interesting phrase. You've lost your demon. Of course, Mick Jagger's a Leo. Um, I suppose when you've lost your demon, you kind of you're not able to um, kind of be yourself. You've lost your spark. Maybe that's how you feel at the moment, 
Aries, that you have recently lost your demon over the last few days. But anyway, I would have said your demon, you've got your demon back now because we've got this grand trine in grand trine in in fire signs and so I do think that uh, things 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 are starting to move now I have to qualify that because in terms of other people and how you relate to other people I'm not convinced that you're in the mood for getting too close to anyone. Yeah, you might be an exciting person to have around in a general sense, but in terms of one-to-one -one relationships, it may be that you're kind of holding something back. You're not giving your whole self, and you may actually come over as being ever so slightly cold and reserved. I mean... Only if someone gets close to you, if if people don't get too close to you, and things are on a, things that are happening on a fairly um, light level, or people are just involved in something that is exciting, that's fine. But when you get really close to someone, and, and people try to get to know you, I do think that to, at the moment there may be something. Yeah, somehow you you don't want to reveal everything. Um, I mean, there may be maybe a, a number of reasons for this. I mean, one possibility you could say that. You know, Mars, your ruler, is is in Cancer, and Mars, it's still in Cancer, and so you know, this is a time when, despite everything, you are a little bit cautious, especially as Mars is slowly moving towards an opposition of Pluto, because that opposition of Pluto, Mars is moving very slowly at the moment, so that Mars opposition Pluto doesn't become exact, I think, until um, the very beginning of November, but still... Today, you are holding something back, and it's nothing that you have to apologize for. It just may be that you're just getting used to a new situation, and you're just not prepared to reveal everything, especially on an emotional level. Taurus. Taurus, you are perhaps being a little cautious today you you just feel that maybe you need to tread carefully there are things you don't understand and if there are things you don't understand then you shouldn't be in a rush and you know Taurus is a slow moving sign it likes to take it likes to take its time to understand what's going on it's it tries not to be impulsive, though, of course, Uranus is, is, is moving through Taurus. Move, Uranus has been moving through Taurus for some time. So there is an impulsive streak to you that is kind of sometimes coming out into the open, but maybe not today. I think you are valuing your, you are valuing your security and you want to pause and try to understand what's happening. And you know, maybe this also relates to the fact that uh, it's a last quarter moon today. So last quarter moon is a time when you, Taurus, you feel that things have reached a certain point and you want to wait and really understand what's happening. And I think that's, that's, absol that's absolutely okay because... Uh, being a Taurus, it's you value your security, and you know, you know, especially now when we don't have any planets in Earth signs, except for Uranus and Pluto. I mean, I keep emphasizing this that there are no planets in Earth signs because it's. I mean, it's true, <laughs> and it's it's kind of more um, more noticeable than usual, and. So, you know, there is this question, where is your grounding? And, and I think that with Moon moving into Leo and with this last quarter Moon, you feel that there's something you need to sort out. You need to make sure that you really are standing on firm ground. And that may not be something that right now that you, you're taking for granted. Still, 
it's nice that you're putting a high premium on security. I think it's not just nice for yourself, but I think it's perhaps nice for certain other people because, you know, there is a trine aspect between the moon and Venus. OK, that moon trine Venus may be quite late in the day, but it's still very much there. And indeed, when you've got moon in Leo and Venus in Sagittarius, you know, there is that feeling that things are things are happening, that you've got something to offer and you know, the right relationship, Taurus, can actually work work very well for you. And you need you need the right relationship. Indeed you perhaps you need the right people around you. The wrong people around you are just gonna make you miserable. The right people around you can be you know, can very can be quite actually quite exciting and motivating because uh, you know at the moment you've got something to say. There's something you want to say, but you're looking for the right place in which to say it. And it seems that you very often feel that you just never quite have the opportunity. So you are looking for that opportunity to um, you know tell people what's on your mind to. Um, to uh, maybe discuss your own your own ideas because an idea is certainly forming and that idea is is becoming strong and it's becoming important to you and it, it's it's just I think going to be important that you are able to communicate it indeed you know with the last quarter moon there may be a feeling that if you don't do it now then you might miss your chance. And in talking about missing your chance, in terms of relationships, it's possible with this last quarter moon that there's something you need to say to someone or something you need to do in, from a relationship perspective that if you don't do it now, then, yeah, you might have missed your chance and you might have to wait until after the new moon, or at the beginning of November and after the new moon, Maybe the situation won't be quite so good. Well, okay, perhaps not. Perhaps, perhaps you need to wait until November if you if you if you feel you've missed your chance. But uh, just because you're feeling cautious doesn't mean that you should do nothing. And I do think, in terms of other people, it does seem that there is an initiative which uh, you probably need to take. Gemini. Gemini, you seem to have quite a lot to say for yourself. I mean, I suppose you could say that Gemini's have always got a lot to say for themselves, but uh, the words, I think, in most cases will flow freely. And those words, in many cases, won't come from your brain. I don't know if they'll even come from your heart. They'll come from somewhere else. Because Gemini, you're you're quite inspired at the moment. I mean, of course, me being a Gemini, I would say that, wouldn't I? Uh, do I feel particularly inspired right now? Well, not necessarily. Uh, but uh, anyway, in theory, Gemini's are supposed to be feeling inspired, uh, and I think we, I think indeed, we can feel inspired, and we therefore shouldn't just be focusing on the facts because the facts in themselves are pretty one-dimensional or two-dimensional at the best. We should, probably shouldn't be concentrating on our feelings because we're a Gemini. Our feelings are not always 100% accurate. But we need to find something else. We need to find a third way of communicating. And that way of communicating is just perhaps just being part of the world, part of the universe, tuning into something. It's like we have to sort of plug in to the fundamental power of the universe and kind of bring it all together. And we can indeed communicate in a way that is very inspiring. And we shouldn't think about it too much. It's very important not to think too much about what we say. Now, I understand that sometimes if we don't think about what we say then we can make mistakes or we can 
make make fools of ourselves but if we have really tuned into the right thing if we've really tuned into the universe we, we shouldn't make make mistakes so we can uh, in fact come over and come over as being a fairly exciting person and you know just don't don't focus too much on the facts don't get don't get too emotional about things and it may be a case gemini that we're kind of pretending to be a far sign today, uh, pretending to be an Aries or a Leo or a Sagittarius. Of course, we're not a far sign, but maybe if you can pretend to be a far sign, um, certainly in terms of what you say, uh, that might be a useful thing to do. And aside from that, I should also point out that you are strangely rather um, rather charismatic and attractive today uh, you don't yeah you don't have to say whatever's on your mind you can just uh you can just be yourself and people are going to like you and so there's no need to be too shy and it's perhaps a good idea to have a relatively high opinion of yourself um you don't have to be arrogant or boastful about it, but because people like you, because people are going to be attracted to you, you you need to find perhaps a way of sort of becoming perhaps even the center of attention. And if there's anything or anyone that you want to ingratiate yourself with, then you know now might be the chance to do it, because as I've said, you are. You are quite charismatic and attractive, and so uh, don't doubt yourself. Don't ask. Don't ask too many questions. I mean, it's it's so easy for Gemini's to have their doubts, but right now your doubts are not really fulfilling any useful purpose. And you know your attractiveness is going to be boosted by what you say, and what you say is going to be yeah, is. Is going to be exciting and it will get people's attention and people will really think that you've um, you've got something to offer and so in that sense Gemini I think it, it's a day when things things really could start to work for you so um, it's just so important that you, you you don't doubt yourself and you're able to see things see things through and maybe it's not even just about today I think you that you can see things through right through and until until tomorrow as well so yeah um, take advantage of the opportunity cancer cancer the moon is changing sign moving from cancer into into leo and this sign change is somewhat dependent on where you are i think that uh if you're in um, Australia or New Zealand, the sign change, well, it's going to be more so late in the day. And for most of the day in Australia and New Zealand and East Asia, the moon is actually going to be in Cancer. So it's going to be a Cancerian day. But uh, in Europe and the Americas, it, it's it's pretty much all about the moon being in Leo. So, you know, with this changeover... There are certain advantages of a moon moving out of moon moving out of cancer because while the moon had been in cancer it was it was it was conjunct Mars, and that conjunct Mars certainly was good in terms of you being able to look after your own interests, but uh, maybe it all became a bit too exhausting having to constantly monitor what's going on around you and perhaps you were just a little bit too defensive and maybe with the moon moving moving into leo you feel a greater sense of self because you know the moon is your ruler it's in leo leo is all about self and that sense of self it's very important that you're self-sufficient with moon and leo you you should not be relying on other people's feedback how other people are responding to you uh, that's not what matters it, it's more about you feeling confident in yourself and it's important yeah that confidence should not require 
outside booths. You should not expect anyone to, for example, flatter you or say nice words. If they do flatter you, if they do say nice words, well, that's great. But if they don't, it, it doesn't matter. It, it's not important. You've got to be very centred in that sense. Now, the moon in Leo does make a trine to Venus in Sagittarius. And so moon trine Venus, although other people should not be incredibly important to you, although you should not be relying on other people, that doesn't mean to say that you can't have a favourable impression, that you can't uh, get on with people. And I really think you can, and I think you do understand people, and you possibly benefit from what is essentially a grand trine in fire signs, because the moon in Leo is... Uh, making a trine to Venus and it's making a trine to the North Node. So there's a lot of fire energy here. And so you can perhaps be a little bit more extroverted than usual. And you don't, yeah, you don't have to be so concerned about other people's response. It doesn't matter. If people don't respond to you, then they're the wrong people it, it, you know you 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 can just move on and with this grand trine and fire signs it you know it does involve the north node and it, it involves what what you're supposed to be doing where you're supposed to be focusing your energy at the moment and you know as i tell you you know i suppose with maybe a certain boring frequency, that the North Node is continues to move through Aries and North Node is, is a slow mover and so it's going to be in Aries for for quite a long time. It's, of course, North Node always, by and large, moves backwards. And so that North Node in Aries is is about you making an impact, you getting noticed and... In the right environment, you certainly can be noticed. So I'm sort of kind of qualifying what I'm saying. You know, I've already said that you shouldn't worry if people don't pay attention to you. That's true. But at the same time, if you're in the right place, then I think it's almost guaranteed that people will pay attention to you simply because you've got something very important to communicate and your ability to understand what motivates other people at the moment is really very finely tuned. And indeed, you can be a motivator. Now, I don't know how motivated you feel at the moment, but uh, you can feel motivated, provided the environment is right. And so don't feel disappointed in other people if they're not if they're not, you know, not responding to you in the right way, because it just may be that they need the right level of encouragement. And I think that you can be a very encouraging force. And once you understand what people want and what people what people are excited by, then in many respects, Cancer, I, I don't think that anything will, will, will stop you. But uh, you, know, you don't have to do anything crazy here. You just have to be yourself, do everything in a sort of um, quiet, deliberative manner, get the preparations right, and then just when the time is right, you're, you're, you are going to be able to make, I believe, quite a powerful impact. Leo. The moon is moving into Leo. OK, if you're in Australia or New Zealand, it may not move into Leo until late in the day, in the evening, but uh, it doesn't matter. The moon will eventually get find its way into Leo. And that that's obviously good news because Leo is your sign. And so with the moon in Leo, you have a sense of, I suppose, a certain sense of arrival that after much travail and hard work or 
maybe there's been a sense of concern. Finally, you have arrived, and the moon in Leo makes a trine to Venus, and it makes a trine to the North Node. So in that sense, we have ourselves a, a grand trine in fire signs. And that's just what Leo that's just what Leo wants. You know, over the last couple of days you may have felt that you weren't quite yourself, that there you know, you and you and the rest of the world there was a certain there was a certain mismatch there. But I think that that mismatch is pretty much over and that you're in you're in a state of mind where you can be yourself, you can engage and you may have a certain sense of excitement because you're aware of possibilities and you you start to realize that things don't have to be boring things can be exciting things can be exciting and you are able to make your own choices it may have felt until very recently that you weren't able to make choices that perhaps people were making decisions for you or you weren't able to fully tell people what you wanted, but now things have changed. You can find things that really are exciting and stimulating. And in fact, activities that in the past seemed boring, you, know, you were doing them just out of a sense of duty. Things like that that seem boring, seem tedious, you're now able to look at them in a different light. And so don't be negative about it. You, you, you do something today and it's, and it's, and it's fantastic. You, and you did it, tried it yesterday and it just felt completely flat. And if you are working for anyone or someone is engaging your services uh, or you're, you're, you know, it doesn't have to be paid. I suppose it could be charity work or it could be just some group activity. I, I think that you are going to find that your abilities are going to be properly harnessed. You may have felt that you weren't being used in the right way, that you were having to do things in a way that just didn't feel real. But now things do feel real. And I think that at the moment, you know, with the moon making that trine to Venus, people are starting to appreciate your creativity and you know that includes i know that could include include clients and employers and authority figures you know if appropriate i mean i don't know obviously what your precise situation is and while all this is going on there may be a certain sense that there may be times during the day where things move very, very quickly, really quickly, much faster than expected. And there may be other times in the day when things are just slower, when um, you don't have to be in so much of a hurry. And that's uh, that might feel that today is somewhat stop-go, and I don't think this takes away from what I was saying earlier. You know, it is a good day where things are moving, but you might feel that that all the activity is concentrated into a fairly short period of time. And then there are periods where nothing is going on. So perhaps what's what's really important today is to is to understand what's going on in the slow periods. So they may seem to be slow periods because nothing seems to be going on. Now, what's, what perhaps the key thing is, during those slow periods, this is the time where you really have to have to fill things up, where you have to perhaps be assertive, where you have to push things. So if nothing is going on, then push it a bit and see what happens. Because if you do start pushing things, you'll find that things start to move again. And you, you could say, so again, this is a situation where you have actually... A lot of control and so don't be don't be put off by times where nothing seems to be going on because it's just about you it's just about you being able to make things happen and yeah today I think you that you really can make make things happen so uh, 
overall, Leo, I think that it's it's a, you have a feeling that uh, things things are starting. Uh, you've you can feel this this spark, and uh, you may be the, you may be the person that can initiate things. Indeed, in certain cases, it may be your responsibility to initiate things. So there's certainly no reason to be bored because. Um, you're in such an amazing position to create to create events to create happenings uh, so uh, so leo do do try to enjoy the day virgo virgo it may feel that things are slowing down a little i mean from your subjective perspective the world out there may actually be moving pretty quickly but not you i think that uh, you feel that it's perhaps time to um, perhaps be an observer you don't have to be in the thick of things and in some ways that that's fine i i mean the moon is moving through leo the moon is moving through the sign leo is is the sign just before virgo so you could say with the moon moving moving through leo that for you it's it has a certain preparatory feel to it that there are things that you're having to work on and maybe it's just not the time to have sort of dramatic dramatics action and you know a dramatic action may just not be something that you want to get involved with and you can you can let other people work out their own dramas i mean that's uh that may be your initial perspective but virgo i i think it's actually quite important that you don't underestimate yourself because when you are with people uh, you know when people get to know you there's something about you that is quite appealing and you can get people's trust very quickly now maybe one of the reasons you can get people's trust is because you know because things are moving quickly at the moment it does seem that the pace of the world is is speeding up with the moon and leo the moon's making a trine to venus and so so that uh, may make a few people feel uneasy and you know when people are feeling uneasy they perhaps feel a need for security and and who can provide them with security and reassurance well probably you and the things that you say are going to be reassuring and you don't have to say anything that is particularly profound you just have to respond come up with explanations you know try to be rational try to be logical and that's what people in fact want to hear because you know you can you can almost be a voice of sanity and you can also be a voice of sanity in terms of yourself so if you don't fully understand what's happening um, your own internal dialogue can convince you that in fact you know everything is fine there's nothing much to nothing much to worry about now there still may be a reason to be a little bit cautious in terms of what you say because from a heliocentric perspective mercury is still making a square to it's still making a square to saturn i mean let me just uh let me just go back to the heliocentric chart just to show you show you what I mean. Uh, so here is a, here is the heliocentric chart. So so Mercury is your ruler, and so from a heliocentric point of view, okay, Mercury is moving away from a square to Saturn, but it's still to an extent there, and it's it is something that you 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 need to be aware of. In the wrong situation, perhaps when you're under pressure, you might say something that you later regret. But perhaps it's just too harsh. You might 
be very true, you might be very real, you might tell someone the truth, but sometimes telling someone the truth isn't always the right thing to do. So the truth itself is not a virtue. And so I think you need you need to be aware of that. Um, sometimes people don't need to be told the truth. They can be told the truth later, when perhaps when they're not so sensitive. So be careful what you say. But I think in most cases you will be careful what you say. I mean, Mercury is Mercury ruler. Remember, is in Scorpio, and it's maybe square. It may be square Saturn heliocentric he heliocentrically but it's also trine saturn geocentrically and i suppose with that mercury trine saturn geocentrically that does give you a certain amount of discipline and sensitivity so going back to what i was saying and the fact that you're able to be reassuring in most cases you can be very reassuring and people are going to trust you and and i think that because people are trust people are going to trust you i think they're also going to be attracted to you you know that may be attracted to you maybe in times of crisis when pe- when people are uns- unsure of themselves you can um provide some kind of uh, structure or at least some some good advice so i know that uh, virgo is supposed to be a sign of service a service to your fellow humans you can't always be at other people's beck and call but uh, i think today you can be i think that today virgo you can be a force for good libra libra there is a trine between the moon and venus okay this trine between moon and venus maybe more about tomorrow rather than today if you're if you're in australia and new zealand but overall the moon is starting to make a trine aspect to venus and you know i think that that gives you a real a real lift you know the moon is in leo venus is in sagittarius so in a broad sense we can say that the moon the moon and venus are on sort of either side of libra libra is on the 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 whole sign of libra you could say is on the moon on the moon venus midpoint and so uh so that makes you um, very i think i think charismatic it makes you sociable it makes it allows you to respond and the things you say just make a lot of sense people do people do listen to you and it it makes sense because your vision is in accord with their vision it's not when i say making sense i don't mean making sense because you're being sensible and practical it's because because you're able to say things which sound right at this particular time and you're able also to provide a a certain amount of fire you can provide it i mean i understand that libra is not a fire sign but at the moment with venus in sagittarius you're perhaps a little more fiery than usual and you can you can actually be pretty inspiring and the moon is not just trining Venus, but the moon is trying the North Node, and I think the North Node is the North Node is in Aries, another far sign. So, with that moon Venus North Node, fiery grand trine, you're able to motivate people, get people moving. Um, I suppose you know you could say as. Uh, how did that how did the advert go what's a beer that reaches the parts that other beers can't or whatever you know maybe libra is a sign that reach is that reaches the parts that other signs can't reach in terms of understanding other people and sort of giving people what they want and so in terms of what they want i mean that's not just giving people what they want 
just for the sake of it. It's telling people what they want because there are things that people want to hear and you're able to give that. And in fact, you're able to communicate with, you know, with great power and to an extent you're able to pick up on, you know, what is what's happening in the world and you're able to feed it back to people in a way that sounds very very sincere and heliocentrically remember we've got a conjunction between venus and pluto and i think that that venus pluto conjunction okay it might have been exact yesterday but i think that that venus pluto conjunction is still very much in operation and with that venus pluto conjunction I think that you're able to um, get below the surface, really, really start to understand people, and yeah, tell them what they want to hear, and at the same time, you can guide people in a, in a particular direction in, in a very subtle way. So, you know, if there's something you want. Libra, then I think you can get people to you can actually get people to to oblige and you you get what you want not by not by telling people what to do in fact you get what you want by appearing to do what other people want you appear to be at other people's service and you are at other people's service but at the same time it's 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 a subtle process that perhaps only Librans understand that you know in the end things move your way it may be a slow it may be a slow process and then maybe a lot of back and forth but but in the end you are really able to establish yourself and you know establish uh, your your personality and i think that that is that is very satisfactory and relationships in general today should be working very well on all levels, not just one-to-one -one relationships, but your relationships with people, with uh, with the group, with your friends, it it all does seem to be it all seem it all seems to be working. Scorpio, Scorpio, we have uh, the moon moving into Leo, and the moon makes a trine to Leo, and. This moon trine Leo, sorry, this moon, sorry, did I, let me, let me, let me say that again. The moon is moving into Leo and the moon is making a trine to Venus in Sagittarius. Does that sound right? Um, and this trine is, uh, I believe, is, is really working in your favor. It allows you to uh, really um, express who you are. And I think that you're going to be very good at dealing with the public. So if you have any, if you have to deal with the public, whatever the public means to you, I do think you're going to be very good at it. And you'll be able to make, I think, a very good impression. And so it may be about you understanding what the public want, what people want. So in terms of, uh, I suppose, if you're involved in things like marketing or PR, trying to put forward a message, advertising, you'll know what to say, you'll know what to do, and your Scorpio intuition will, will, will just know anyway. That will, that, will be, that will be the sort of icing on the cake. So it's it's very unlikely that your message will be ignored. I don't think that's that's going to going to happen. And of course you're helped by the fact that Mercury is moving well the sun as well, but Mercury is in Scorpio and it's allows you to communicate in the right way. You can communicate in in a way that is I think very compelling and People will, I think, um, listen to you. But you can communicate in a way, you, way, but you don't have to make a lot of noise. By the way, it's it's not about that. It's just about you saying something in a very 
careful, deliberative way. And people just listen. And, you know, there's also the emotional content to the message. And Mercury and Scorpio, you've got that all sorted out. And in fact, Scorpio, the things you say can can actually be really very appealing. It, it seems that... Uh, People just like what you say. They even like the way you say things, the way the the way the words are put together, and so you know you have a chance to um, get people onto your side through your clever words. They don't even have to be clever; they just have to be carefully chosen, and they come from the heart, and that's also very important. Now. This moon trine Venus may well have an impact on things like career and business and status and ambition uh, yeah, because the moon is in Leo. The moon is at the top of your chart in a high, high profile sign. And so with moon trine Venus, you just, you just, you just know how to behave in, in a high profile setting you just get it right and i suppose that links with the fact that you have a good sense of uh, you know, what the public want what people want and so that's good but you'll notice that i'm talking about things at a quite a high level the public the people uh, maybe the group uh, society at large what about on a lower level what about the interpersonal level you know when you get get close to people uh one to one i think there may be a different picture there while it's true that your emotions are finely tuned at the moment it's also true that you are quite uh, protective of yourself and i'm not convinced that you're going to want to reveal much, especially on an emotional level. There are things you want to keep secret and there are things that you want to hold back. And so if people get really close to you, they may actually start to feel that you're a closed book. You are perhaps being more private, more secretive than usual, but it doesn't seem, it doesn't seem to be the case you know, as a public figure, you seem to be available. You seem you can be everyone's best friend. But, but, but when it comes to sort of closer relationships, when people, people, you're, there's a limit to how close you want to you want to get to people, and there's also a limit to what you're prepared to reveal. Um, you can reveal things which don't compromise you, and there's lots of things you can reveal which. There's no risk, there's no compromise, and you come over as being um, a larger-than-life person. But deep down, you do know what you're doing, and there is a strong sense of control here. And, yeah, if, if, if anyone tries to get too close to you, then they'll realise that, that that control really does exist. So that might mean that in terms of existing relationships, particularly close relationships they may not actually work that well because you've got other things on your mind. And yeah, I think that you are being quite quite protective. But, but as I've said, it's not going to be immediately obvious how self-protective you are. Sagittarius. Sagittarius, uh, we have a grand trine in fire signs. You know, we have got... Uh, the moon in Leo, and we've got the North Node in Aries, and we've got Venus in Sagittarius. Yeah, Venus in Sagittarius. And I do think, Sagittarius, that that is really good news, that things are really starting to move. And I do understand that many Sagittarians have felt that things haven't been moving, that things have been a little bit slow, and they haven't been their normal selves. And I, I understand that Part of that has been the fact that Jupiter, your ruler, has is retrograde. But 
you know, you don't want to get too worked up about Jupiter retrograde. I mean, Jupiter goes retrograde for a few months every single year. It just it's just the way Jupiter works. So I wouldn't get I wouldn't be too concerned about it. And now with this grand trine and fast signs with Venus in Sagittarius, I think that uh, there is movement and you just feel perhaps that uh, complications are resolving themselves. And there's a sense in which you are very much alive and that you can articulate yourself, you know, really powerfully spontaneously you don't have to think about it you don't have to worry about it you don't have to be too self-conscious and just a little bit of optimism on your part can just be all it takes to really get things moving and so in terms of you know how things are moving where things should be moving to it's it's it is a time when you need to think about what makes you special what makes you different and what is your unique contribution because that moon venus trine is about it's about other people but it's also about how you relate and you can relate in such a way that your own special contribution can be fully recognized so it should all be happening on your terms and indeed it can all happen on your terms and you know furthermore Sagittarius um, you're really able to talk with power and conviction and strength and you are if necessary going to be very good at arguing if you need to argue I think that will not be a problem you'll be able to defend yourself verbally and if anyone gives you sort of any grief there's any resistance you know you'll be able to you'll be able to fight back with your words and with your personality and that means that i think you're going to be in control pretty quickly so so sagittarius you know the past is the past and you know, you now get a flavour of what can be. This is this is you. This is your this is your day. So, uh, really, don't don't hold back. And people need to know who you are and what you are. At. People need to know who you are, what you've got to offer. And I don't think it's a time where you have to meet people halfway or dilute yourself water down your message no i think you need you need to give people the full sagittarius you need to really understand who you are and what you're here for what you're on the planet for and i think that uh overall sagittarius it, yeah it looks like being a great day maybe five stars out of five capricorn capricorn There is a lot happening today, in a general sense. There's sort of more action than usual. There's a certain sense in which, you know, other people feel inspired and they may want to do things. They may be quite anxious to do things. They want to do it now. But from your perspective, you're not convinced you know, you understand that uh, there are things that you would like to do your way. And I think doing things the right way from your viewpoint is going to be quite important. And it's true also, Capricorn, that you are quite strongly placed. You have you know, you have a strong sense of what you can do, what you can achieve, and you don't really want to want to compromise. That's that's not what you want to do. And so when you look at what's happening around you, there may be a certain sense on your part of displeasure. It just may not be, uh, yeah, it just may not be to your to your liking. And you perhaps feel that things are not being done carefully enough 
And, you know, this may reflect, for example, the fact that today is the last quarter moon. So with the last quarter moon, you know, it's the, the lunar cycle that started three weeks ago is is hitting a crisis. And you know, there's only a week left before the new moon or just over a week before the new moon. And so you may feel that, you know, things have to be done properly. You know, there isn't time to waste on adventures, you know, adventures that are going nowhere. And I think in that sense, Capricorn, you will be able to be uh, quite critical. And I think this could be reflected in what's happening heliocentrically. So heliocentrically, Mercury has made a square to Saturn. And okay, that square between Mercury and Saturn heliocentrically is passing. But it's still there. It's still in existence, and that it, it's still operational. And I think that that ha- is making you somewhat, somewhat cautious. And Mercury square Saturn, yeah, getting annoyed by what other people are saying, particularly if you think that they're being irresponsible. Remember, there's a heliocentric Mercury square Saturn. Also heliocentrically, we've got the beginning of a Mars-Saturn square. Of course, we don't see this geocentrically, but there is a Mars-Saturn square starting to form over the next few days. Uh, I think you're beginning to feel it. And with that Mars-Saturn square, you may just have a sense that things need to slow down a bit. You're trying to slow things down. And you, you probably think that other people are going too quickly. And... And if we look at the geocentric position, you know, Venus is at 8 degrees Sagittarius. Saturn is at 13 degrees Pisces. So what's actually happening is that Venus is moving to a square to Saturn. Uh, and so Saturn is you. And Venus is perhaps other people. And what other people want to, want to, do, want to do, where they think they're going... And there's you, Saturn, trying to slow things down, trying perhaps to pour cold water on on other people's enthusiasm. And that perhaps is something that is happening. I'm not going to judge whether or not that's a good thing to do. You You have to consider, I suppose, what is right, not just in terms of your own interests, but in terms of other people's interests as well. And... If you are working uh, or you have a business um, with that Venus square Saturn, there is a sense of responsibility there. Uh, And over the next few days, you may show that responsibility. You may feel that certain things should not be done. And I think you're going to have very clear ideas about what should not be done. And I think overall, Capricorn... You're in. You're you're at a time when you're likely to err on the side of caution. You can see the excitement, but you're not convinced, and you just may feel that certain people have got their timing wrong. And maybe society has got its timing wrong, and you may just then feel your job is to remind remind everyone of what is true, what is real, and perhaps you know we need to focus on on the basics and as i say there is no earth as i've said in the past you know there are no planets in earth except for uranus and pluto and you seem to be very aware of that you are you're aware that in many respects there is a lack of foundation and a lot of people don't seem to realize that it's like they're walking on thin ice you can see society walking on thin ice. You can hear the cracks, but other people can't hear the cracks. So uh, maybe uh, you are uh, a voice of caution uh, that people need to listen to. Aquarius. Aquarius, there is, I believe, going to be a certain emphasis on other people and on relationships i mean after all we've got the moon is moving through leo and 
Leo is Leo is your opposite sign, and so with Moon opposition Leo, trine Venus in trine Venus in Sagittarius. If there's something about you that's just quite easy to get on with, and you you can make people happy, you can be perhaps a little more relaxed than usual. And it's then going to be perhaps important that you, you know, try to understand the world from another person's perspective. Um, you, know, I, you know, I know you've got a clear idea about yourself and what you believe is to be right and your view of the world. But, you know, try to let go of that with the moon in Leo. You try to think about what other people are doing um, why they're doing it and perhaps what their priorities are and also try to understand what excites people um, that can be very important you know people do need to be excited at the moment and you know if you can provide that excitement you know that would be that would be great and this moon trine venus it's also making a trine to the north node the north node is in aries and so I think it's going to be very important, Aries, that you're able to communicate on lots of different levels and that you're not uh, too too arrogant about it. You know, there are some forms of communication that you may not approve of. You may feel that they're beneath you. But it's, it's not a time to be too proud. And you, ne you need to use... It. Yeah, all the forms of communication you've got at your disposal, you know, email, text messages, text messaging, um, all these various chats and whatever. It, 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 it's, all, it's all about ways to communicate, ways to reach people. And the means don't, doesn't really matter. It's all about making the connection. Because I think today, Aquarius, it is a great time for making connections. And I think you can... Um, do this uh, you know in terms of technology I think if you make the effort you can understand the technology and so it's about yeah making contact without thinking too much about the broader picture I mean don't ask too many questions don't ask you know yourself about whether this is beneath you whether this is trivial what are you doing that that's not that's not the way forward. Just, just say it, say it as it is, and uh, just be uh, just be yourself. And don't yeah, do not be too self conscious. But this doesn't take away from the fact, Aquarius, that in your own way, you have a, a sense of your own power. You are powerful today. And it's it's just it's a power that may not be immediately obvious. You may not be aware of it yourself, but it's it's very real. And at least you won't be aware of it to begin with. But if you're honest with yourself, there are things you want and you're kind of aware that. Actually, there is a little bit of a power struggle going on and it, it's it's starting to it's starting to manifest and and perhaps it's perhaps it's been manifesting for some time for the last, indeed for the last week or so and it's just sort of coming to a head now and you just feel that something yeah something something has to give and so you don't have to worry about it too much at the moment but you need to consider in terms of every form of communication you have there is a sense of who's in control who has the power and you can worry about that later but it's perhaps just be aware that you having the power is going to be important and i i think you can have the power but right now the key thing is to get on with people and to communicate people with people and to make connections and you, you do that and you know that that should that should be enough also it is a 
last quarter moon today. My sort of final point. So we've got full moon. I think it's on November the 1st, something like that. So we've had, we're at the end of a lunar cycle. And this lunar cycle may be about you making a particular impact. You're trying to make an impact. Perhaps over the course of October, you've been trying to make an impact. You've been trying to do this and you've been trying to do that. And now there may be a certain point of this being the crunch time. If you don't do it now, then you're going to have to wait. You've kind of, you might even feel you've blown the lunar cycle. Um, that's a bit of an exaggeration. But what is it that you have to do? I think in many cases, Aquarius, it may be that in order to achieve some of the things you want to achieve, it may be about having to get one or two people onto your side. And perhaps that's what this first quarter moon is actually about. Sorry, last quarter moon. This is a time when you have to make certain connections and it doesn't matter how you make those connections. You know, that's what I was saying with it doesn't matter what form of communication you use. Make the connection of the people you need. And then, you know, by the time of the, the new moon, the beginning of November, you'll be in, in the right position to be able to, you know, to take advantage of everything that you've managed to uh, bring together. Pisces. Pisces, you do know that things have to be done properly. You're very aware of that. And if anyone is uh, making making a mistake, uh, I think you'll, you'll see it pretty quickly and you'll be able to um, respond pretty quickly. Uh, so in... In that sense, you have a, have quite a sort of fine sense of detail at the moment, and it sort of goes beyond some of the sort of the, the chaos that's associated with your with your sign. You know, say Pisces goes with the flow. It's okay if the details aren't perfect, but right now you do notice things, and you notice things that other people don't notice. And maybe that's just because of your Piscean nature. You can see things in different ways. You can feel things in different ways. And if anything's not right, you, you, you will want to take action. And taking appropriate action in terms of correcting something that is wrong could could be very useful. It could get you get you some praise because you know when you know other people aren't aware but you are aware you see something and people are going to be i think very very appreciative now this sense of detail may also extend to the way you present yourself and the things the things you wear and what you look like you will notice it all and there may be today a, a perhaps slightly uncharacteristic attention to detail, just wanting everything to be perfect in terms of what you look like, or it's not perfect, but as perfect as is necessary, or as perfect as is necessary in terms of your own perceptions at the moment. And that might also relate to how you see other people. If other other people are making mistakes or if they're being sloppy um, you'll you'll see it straight away but it's not that you're going to undermine them because of this you'll just notice it and it may be Pisces that you can actually benefit by noticing other people's mistakes other people don't notice it you notice it and that might actually give you some kind of some kind of advantage you know, there's then the question of, you know, how do you communicate, you know, what you feel and what you believe? And today, Pisces, I think you're actually quite a powerful communicator. You can communicate with power and passion 
and also with precision. So if you want to be critical, if you want to take someone to task, you'll be very good at it. And I think in terms of arguments, you'll, you'll, you, you know, you'll, you'll be able to give as good as you can get. But there, there does come a point where you may be tempted to take things too far. You know, once you start talking, once you start arguing, once you start cr- being being critical, you just may go further than you need to go. And I suppose in that situation, there's, a, there's some, some danger that you cause some offence. That is possible. I'm not saying it is going to happen. I'm, I'm not saying it is going to happen. And... Finally, I should say that, you know, I've talked about this moon trine Venus, but this moon trine Venus, it does link with the North Node. So we've actually got a grand trine in far signs. And this grand trine in far signs may actually help you in terms of uh, of money. That is possible. And the reason I say that is because, you know, the North Node is in Aries and Aries is a sign in your chart which is connected with money, uh, but it's simple money, it's easy money, things that are straightforward. It's not complicated money. And so it may be that, you know, with your with your social skills, which I think are pretty good at the moment, you can use these social skills to if necessary, it, I don't know, don't know what you need. I don't know. Don't I don't know what's important to you. But it may be that you can use your social skills to, in some way, improve your financial situation. And so, for example, I don't know if you're going for an interview for a job, or you're asking for money, or requesting a grant. Then I think you'll be able to do it in a very straightforward but compelling kind of way. So, your persuasiveness and charm in terms of money and getting things may not be money it may be other some other material item you want and um, your your charm and persuasiveness i think is going to be good for on good form so uh, i think it could it could could serve you very well and that's it those are my forecasts for the 12 signs and i now want to look at today from the perspective of the i ching so i asked the question um what is Thursday going to be like for those watching the I Ching section of this video? And the first hexagram I got was hexagram 45, which is gathering together. And this indicates that it should be quite a sociable day. And I suppose that... Uh, fits in with the fact that we've got moon the moon in leo trine venus in sagittarius so things things are moving and you know we don't have to do things alone and um, you know if for example we feel that things aren't going right for us we can get help and just asking for help that that simple act of asking for help um is probably going to be all it takes. You know, we put out a hand and there is another hand to pull us out or whatever uh, whatever hole we might be in. I'm not saying we're in a hole. I'm just saying that uh, help, is, help is available. And in general, things are best done with other people rather than, you know, when we're, when we're alone. And... In terms of us, our social activities, you know, we we shouldn't necessarily be thinking about ourselves. And it, it, if we can gather people around for some common purpose, uh, it will be very much appreciated. And I suppose one has to ask, you know, where is this all leading? And we do have two moving lines, and so gathering together does transition to the hexagram. Uh, difficulty at the beginning and you know difficulty at the beginning is not such a bad hexagram because you know it indicates that you know in the end that things will 
things will change and difficulty at the beginning gives us gives us the idea of there is a difficulty but there are ways perhaps around around this difficulty and it all perhaps links to other people and the connections we have made so if we're in a situation where we've got lots of contacts and lots of people who know who we are and we know them and we're in contact with them then uh at the first sign of trouble, well, we can get some assistance, can't we? So that's uh, that's diff- that's difficulty that's difficulty difficulty at the beginning, and I think it all sort of links with the fact that we have this grand trine in fire signs today. You know, the moon trine, the moon trine Venus, and the moon and Venus trine a North Node. It, it is, I think, very sociable, and there's just a sense that. Uh, things can just happen in a very sort of fiery kind of way. So if there are difficulties at the beginning, we've already done the preparation to make sure that there's a way around the problem. So I don't think these difficulties at the beginning are really going to come to much because um, we'll know what to do, we'll know who to consult, we'll know where to get help um, if needed. And now I want to look at the United States. I'm not... I don't think I'm going to say anything particularly amazing about the United States, um, any, uh, anything particularly earth-shattering, but uh, I thought that it would be a good idea to consider you know, what is going on in the United States' chart. And you know, it's a chart that you know, I keep coming back to, and, and it's a chart that does seem to work extremely well, you know, looking at the big events in America's lifetime as a country whether it's Pearl Harbor or 9-11 or the Second World War it 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 does seem to fit and I do think that the horoscope of the United States uh, does tell us sort of what kind of what kind of country we're dealing with you know I think that that sun in cancer with the moon in Aquarius is um, really really does tell us about the tell us about the country sun in cancer there is something like you know people go to america with uh, their own ideas i suppose traditionally they they come because of religious persecution and they and they anyway they find their little patch of america their little part of america and they can be very protective about that part of america and there is a certain there's a certain maudling sentimentality about america sometimes americans can be a little bit over sentimental maybe not as much as they used to be but that can be part of america and moon in aquarius you know is a, is the fantasy of freedom and i think i see the moon in the moon in aquarius if you take if you have the time if you have the time right the moon in aquarius is i think about the first amendment you could argue the moon in aquarius in the third house i mean that's so much a part of America, such so much a part of the United States. And one thing that I do find that is interesting about the U.S. is the fact that it really doesn't have any planets in Earth signs. And okay, it's got Neptune in Virgo, Pluto in Capricorn, but you know these are transpersonal planets, and I think that the lack of Earth in the United States manifests in a compensatory way it it's like the united states has to compensate for not having any planets in earth and so that might be why there is this obsession with property rights why there is um i think an obsession with money i mean having looked at you know having having lived in the in the u.s and just looking at how a local council works you know i spend a lot of time observing the town council here in operation and you really see how important money is and i know money is always important regardless of what country you are but it seems to be massively important that money is a solution to everything that you can um you know for example you can cut down a grove of oak trees but it's okay you know, for example, if a company builds a where builds a I don't know wants to build a warehouse and um, they cut down a grove of oak trees to, to, which take five hundred six hundred years 
they can grow to they can you know, they, they can really i don't know they take 200 years to reach maturity and you cut them down to build a to build a a warehouse but you can somehow mitigate it so if that if the company uh spends some money you know throws a hundred thousand dollars or a few hundred thousand dollars it somehow mitigated the destruction um now, maybe it's just a problem that's more from just America, but it does seem that that lack of Earth is part of the American experience, and it's done in a compensatory way. And I kind of think of think it interesting that Donald Trump, um, one of the um, obviously who I I think is about to become president again, you know, he doesn't have any Earth in his chart, and he has, seems to have that similar attitude. You know, money is everything for for Trump. Money and development and building and concrete, and you know, so I think that that uh, that that lack of Earth is is important. And you know, at the moment, in terms of what's happening right now, uh, we don't have much Earth in the sky, do we? So there's the United States' chart with Neptune in Virgo, Pluto in Capricorn, and that's, you know, that's, all, that's, that's all there is. I mean, we don't, we don't have any earth in this, you know, there, the, here is, okay, here is the chart for the presidential elections. You can see that there's Uranus and Pluto, and yes, the moon is, the moon will be in Capricorn at the time of the elections, but at the moment, you know, on October the 23rd, um, we don't have anything in earth signs and i think um unless you count uranus and pluto unless you count uranus and pluto so i think that that there is at the moment in the in the united states that that does sort of reflect some of the instability going on in in the country uh, it, it is reminded of its lack of earth its lack of grounding people wonder what is it all about where am i standing and of course, one of the big things going on, or has been going on, is the fact that Pluto, Pluto right now, is okay. Pluto is stationary direct on October the twenty fourth. It's, but Pluto is very, very close to the United States' natal Pluto. So people talk talk about this Pluto return, and I think that we can very much see this. Pluto return. I think people, a lot of people, have talked about Pluto return. I'm sure every uh, every astrologer is talking about the Pluto return and the fact that it is extreme. And in many cases, people don't seem to be able to consider alternative possibilities. So, for example, in 2020, I I did this horary chart, which, as far as I'm concerned, absolutely said that Biden was going to win. And, um, you know, I've, I talked about this. I, I mentioned this chart on, uh, I think on, on, it, was, it, was an, it was an astrology Reddit. And I talked about this chart. And I, I remember looking at the responses to, 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 to my, uh, to this chart. And people, people, a lot of people didn't believe me. They said that, you know, Biden, Trump was definitely going to win. But it would seem that they were comfortable with Trump winning. I mean, when I say comfortable, even though they didn't want Trump to win, they thought, well, it's just going to happen anyway, you know. But So they can't have been too emotionally engaged with it. But now, with America and its Pluto return, it's become, the whole thing has become very sort of obsessive, hasn't it? I mean, I think that uh, there seem to be people on the, on, the, on the Democrat side who believe, seem to believe that it's so, so unacceptable for Trump to be elected president, that it actually can't possibly happen. And I'm wondering if that's having an impact on West, some Western and American astrologers who are predicting that um, Harris is going to win. I think it's, it may just be because they think that it's so impossible, so outrageous, so unacceptable for Trump to, set, to, to get a second term that it can't possibly happen i think on the republican side i don't think you, you i don't think you get that kind of view to you know i think republicans are much more aware of that possibility of um of harris winning uh they're, they're afraid of it but you've of course with pluto return you've still got this fear you've got two groups of people that think you, know, you the republicans in america i mean i have talked to a couple of republicans they think that Kamala harris winning is 
the end of civilization as we know it. And likewise, there are Democrats who think that Trump winning is the end of civilization as we know it. And this is, this is perhaps connected with the Pluto return. And I go back to the, you know, England's Pluto return. England had its Pluto return. England's last Pluto return took place during the 1550s, I think during the reign of Mary I. And so you had a similar situation, I mean, a much more extreme situation, where you had a complete clash between Protestants and Catholics. For Pluto return, Britain's, England's Pluto return happened when you had the Catholic Queen on the throne, and she was basically killing Protestants. Protestant bishops were being burnt at the stake. It was a very extreme situation. If you were a Protestant, it must have felt like, you know, the, the end of a, you know, the end of the world. It was, you know, it, it must have, it must have been hell. And of course, it, the Catholics had their victory. And then, Pluto return happened. And then a few years later, Mary just died. And I suppose that's the equivalent of an election <laughs> when you had kings and when you had queens and she was immediately taken. Her sister took over and her sister was a Protestant. So everything changed. You had the two extreme philosophies and they can't occupy the same place. And so I think in terms of what's happening in America, it perhaps might be a good idea to look at the 1550s in, in England. OK, the 1550s were perhaps more extreme um, from what's going on in America. I don't think anyone's going to get burnt at the stake. Um, but it's it it feels like everyone is in a winner takes all, or everyone feels that we're in a winner takes all situation, and that that seems to be what what's going on with the uh, with this with this Pluto return. Now, as far as the United States and its ongoing transits are concerned, um, so I mean let's. Let's just let's just look at the look at the election. See see what is happening uh, because it's now two weeks away. So th these transits are, are pretty much with us. And so you know we've just had Jupiter um, in so inner wheel. We've got the United States outer wheel. We've got um, the outer wheel. We have. Um, what's happening on November the 5th, but, you know, it's only two weeks away. So we've just had Jupiter going stationary um, stationary retrograde, and Jupiter's gone stationary stationary retrograde, conjunct the United States' is Mars, and Jupiter going stationary retrograde, conjunct the United States' is Mars. Now, you could say that that represents war and conflict, Um whether it's in with I don't know with Russia or China or whatever, but I suspect that in this case it's it's about the internal conflict. I've a lot of projection, of course. Mars in it, Mars has got with the United States with Mars in its seventh house. There's a lot it projects. Um, it it's can't accept its perhaps its own America can't accept its own aggressiveness, so perhaps it sometimes projects it onto other countries. I suppose you could say that uh, it's quite it's been quite common for Americans to project internal problems onto other countries. So, for example, um, in two thousand and sixteen, you know, with you know. <laughs> With that election blaming blaming Hillary blaming the election defeat on the Russians, for example, and I suppose this you know people are still blaming internal forces i mean it's, it's not just just the democrats i mean it's um you know people talking about the how the Iranians are trying to send assassination squads to kill Trump, and so that perhaps is J Jupiter conjunct mars and it is it is that feeling that the whole country is under uh, is under pressure and we shouldn't see jupiter as, in this sense as being a benefic here i think jupiter is just exaggerating everything it's just making things so much stronger and perhaps so much worse than they were um were at the beginning so jupiter is is i think being quite mischievous and you know, a reminder in terms of what Jupiter is doing is that, you know, Jupiter is going retrograde. Jupiter is going retrograde towards the 
towards the descendant and you know so jupiter will be on will will be on united states as descendants you know soon enough and so that might in itself cause um cause a few issues i mean if we just look at the the inauguration of the next president by the time of the inauguration of the next president on january 20th 2025 jupiter will be at 1139 um, gemini so it's it's getting it's it really is getting close and so over the next few months you know by inauguration maybe maybe the united states will have some kind of conflict not just within itself but within perhaps the world at large but even then i think that that perhaps shows tells us something about uh the strife building up in building up in the us and aside from that mars is mars is about to go retrograde mars goes retrograde on december the on december the 6th and there's mars at the time of the election it's going very slowly and on december the 6th it goes retrograde very close to the united states's north node and i suppose the north node may be a point of contact with the rest of the world i mean i think that is that's absolutely possible it may be i suppose where the united states's destination as a country actually is but mars on the mars on the north node could be a problem and i think that that this mars on the north node the reason that there there are a couple of reasons why it's a problem it's not just because it's not just because it's a north node it's also the way it links with the biden inauguration chart but i'll be looking at the biden inauguration chart in a moment so and and look at saturn saturn is square the united states is ascendant i mean assuming we've got the time right for the birth of america uh five what was that five ten p.m on july the 4th 1776 saturn is going to be saturn is get saturn's going to be square the ascendant so uh things are happening in america and it certainly doesn't seem to be easy and i think that uh it doesn't seem to be a country that yeah it doesn't really seem to be a country that's really at ease with itself now turning to biden's inauguration um i think this is an important chart because it tells us something about the the regime and the regime that we're in the biden harris regime and the kind of pressures that it might be that it might be under that it might be about to experience and with the biden with the biden inauguration chart uh you know i do think it's a really awful chart um uh you know that mars uranus conjunction is exact i know that mars uranus conjunction may say something about the war in ukraine i mean that is one possibility it may say something about the fact that biden was effe- was was effectively i don't know it was almost a sort of a coup wasn't it okay he wasn't thrown out as in terms of being president but he wasn't able to stand for the, for a second term and uh that may, that might that might be the mars might, that might be how the mars uranus conjunction is is working and and the sun you know the sun is always at inaugurations is always at sun, is always at 0 degrees aquarius um at least it has been since uh since the 1940s presidents used to be um inaugurated um i think in march was it march of 4th something like that uh, but now they're they're inaugurated in in january so the sun is always at, always at 0 degrees aquarius and yeah this time round that sun in aquarius really does matter because because of because of where pluto is um pluto is moving into aquarius so pluto is going to be on this in is the in december was it december when does pluto go into aquarius no, it's november the 15th i think that pluto goes into aquarius uh 
yeah, Pluto goes into Aquarius, no, sorry, November the 19th. Pluto goes into Aquarius, it starts to make the conjunction to, to the inauguration's sun. And remember, Mars goes stationary direct at six degrees Leo. So that means that Mars is going stationary direct in December, on December the 6th, on the Mars-Uranus conjunction. And in the Biden inauguration chart. So, you know, we might think that, you know, there's going to be the election and then someone will win and then there'll be a transition to the new regime. And I think in terms of transitions, you know, people have always thought that, you know, how Trump has been, uh, how Trump was was horribly unconstitutional on January the 6th, 2001. How Trump, you know, tried to usurp the Constitution, tried to take over, and we see this as being um, being some being something unique and unique and horrible. <laughs> but uh, I think the Democrats have to be careful about projecting this. You know, there is a lot of pressure after the election, and uh, you know, with. Mars going direct, going stationary retrograde on the United States' north node, with um, Jupiter crossing the United States' descendant, with, you look at this inauguration chart, Pluto on the sun of the inauguration chart, with Mars going stationary on the Mars-Uranus Mars -Uranus square in the inauguration chart. You know, I just get the feeling that... that if the Democrats lose, which I think they do, you know, I don't think they're gonna, I don't think they're going to give up gracefully, uh, regardless of how they lose. I think there's going to be a lot of resistance, and that resistance is going to take. I mean, it's probably already being planned, but I think the resistance to Trump taking over, in terms of this chart, may be extreme, may be really unexpected. And I think this goes back to the fact that, um, you know, we've got this Pluto return. It's, it's, it's a winner-takes-all society. And many Democrats seem to believe that a Trump presidency is the absolute worst possible thing that can possibly happen. It's not going to be like 2016. It seems to me absolutely clear that Democrats can't deal with it, including Democrats who are in 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 control of the levers of government. So, I don't know, I get the, I get the feeling here that, uh, you know, we shouldn't think that it's only, only Trump who's capable of unconstitutional actions. I think that, I'm, I don't think, that, okay, we're not talking about coups or anything, but it will just be interesting to watch the Democrats if and when, and I think it's going to be when rather than if, um, when Trump, when Trump wins. And I think, you know, that is, that's something, uh, we'd really need to watch out for. And I find the North Node in that inauguration chart also very interesting because the North Node uh, is where the Biden regime is heading, you could say. And what that North Node means kind of depends on your perspective, doesn't it? Now, you could say if you are a Democrat, if you are a Kamala Harris supporter, you would say, well, look, the North Node is in Gemini uh, on January the 20th, 21, 2021. So this is, this is where the regime is heading. This is where the Biden regime is heading. There's, there is, there's Kamala Harris's chart. Kamala Harris has got her ascendant at 2425 Gemini and her North Node is at 2431 Gemini. So you know, she she became vice president pretty close to her North Node return. And so you could say that, you know, Kamala Harris is, you know, where the presidency is heading. The idea that, you know, she's not only going to be the she's a vice president. And so it's heading towards Kamala Harris. That's one way of looking at it. You could look at it in an alternative way. You could say, well, the North Node is at 19 degrees, four minutes Gemini. So... That means that uh, if we think about Donald Trump's chart, Donald Trump, he's got his North Node <laughs> at 20 Gemini too. And 
at 2048 and he's got his he's got his son at 2256 Gemini 2256 remember that and so you could argue that the north node is saying where you know where the presidency is heading where the where the regime is heading and if we do a solar arc direction of this chart let's just di use solar arc directions to um to, to to direct the organ the the inauguration so we're going to take the inauguration and we're going to direct it to um uh we're going to direct it to the election, November the 5th, 2024. So if we direct the North Node let's, to the election, then let's just, so we take the inauguration and then we, you can see how it, it, it directs from 19 degrees for Gemini to 2256. So the directed North Node at the time of the election is at 2256 Gemini. And Donald Trump's son is at 2256 Gemini. So you could argue that the North Node in the inauguration chart is could hint at Harris taking over in the end as president, but it could also hint at Donald Trump um, taking over, um, as indeed I, I, I think um, I think will happen. I mean, I do, and I do think there's going to be incredible resistance um, from the Democrats. You know, to, uh, those holding the levers of power to Trump taking over, and I think I think that that is what all the aggravation, you know, the fact that it's a Pluto return, perhaps perhaps we've got Jupiter on um, Jupiter on the U United States is Mars. The fact that Mars is on the United States is North Node. The fact that Mars is squaring the Mars Uranus in the, um, the Mars Uranus in the inauguration chart. So I do think. Uh, I do think trouble is brewing here and you know I don't think it's going to be quite on the level of the January the 6th thing but I do think whatever happens in this election there are going to be real attempts to stop Trump taking over or trying some way to uh, curtail his power um, so that will be interesting to see how it works out. The one other thing is that I think it's always important to look at the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction here. And here's the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction, which took place on December the 21st, 2020. So the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction is about, um, is, you know, it's, it's the point where Jupiter and Saturn were, in, were exactly conjunct. And it, it tells us in a way about the next 20 years. And it tells us very much about the way the way the world is moving and that, that is almost a chart yes of the next 20 years and i've set okay that jupiter saturn chart is uh set for um is set for westminster in in, in set for london so let me just relocate that to washington dc uh, Okay, so we relocate that to Washington DC. Um, so this happened just around the time of the inauguration, just before the inauguration. And so this Jupiter Saturn conjunction at, at zero degrees, zero degrees 29 Aquarius. Now, at the time of the presidential elections, um, as the results are going to be, I assume, starting to be. Uh, revealed, Mars is going to be at naught zero degrees forty um, Leo. So Mars is going to Mars is going to be exactly opposition the Jupiter Saturn conjunction on, in twenty twenty. So it's just it just gives us more evidence, more more of an idea about what's going to happen. And I so I'm overall I think that. As many astrologers are saying, it's going to be a very difficult time. And I think, though, I think the real reason for this stress, in my opinion, is not because the Trump lot are going to be so upset that Trump has gone, that Trump has lost the election. I think it's more about 
how the Dem democratic establishment responds to a Trump victory. I mean, that's how I see it. I think that seems to be the, the most likely scenario. Anyway, um, that's all I've got to say for today. Uh, as usual, I've probably gone on for too long. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, I'd be very grateful if you were to um, like it. Uh, if you're not subscribed, I'd be super grateful if you were to subscribe. And if you want to buy me a coffee, there is a link in the description. So thanks very much for watching. And I will talk to you again tomorrow.